Hey guys, what's up? Westworld season three just ended last week and I even tweeted during the last episode that this show is a lot like Metal Gear. And uh, I just wanted to do a little bit of a comparison of these themes and kind of events that happen in Metal Gear that happen in Westworld, specifically season three. So if you have not watched Westworld season three, don't watch this video because there's gonna be spoilers everywhere. I'm gonna talk about the whole season. So I'm definitely not the first person to bring up the similarities between Metal Gear and Westworld, but I haven't seen anything online of video or article specifically showing the connections between the two, so I thought I would do so now. Here we go. Back in 2016, first season of Westworld, Hideo Kojima actually tweeted about the season. Watch Westworld episode two. What Anthony Hopkins said in that story was an exact theory of my game design. And what Anthony Hopkins says in that scene is they discover something they hadn't noticed before, something they fall in love with. Now, Kojima didn't elaborate on that, but most people took that as every time you play a Metal Gear game, you want to play again because there's tons of Easter eggs, tons of things you can do in the game that you maybe didn't notice the first time you played through. And that's the same as Westworld, where these hosts are on the same path every single time. So people want to visit and see little things that they hadn't noticed before, little subtleties that they may have missed from their first trip in Westworld. And obviously with a park as large as Westworld and all the other worlds, you're going to have a lot to see and find. That's where we we all think that he's drawing that comparison. The Westworld writers have been pretty honest that they want to make Westworld feel almost like a video game in a lot of ways. Both of them even played GTA to see the different decisions they both made independently of each other. They even brought some game developers on like people from Bioshock and kind of basing things on Red Dead Redemption to bring that feel to the show. So it's not that shocking that it does feel like a video game. We're gonna talk about Dolores specifically in season three, Dolores, where she's this freed host on a mission and really starting the beginning of the season, we think that she's like hell bent on killing the humans and destroying the humans. These are all my personal opinions, so maybe you didn't feel the same way about this season, but I felt that I still love Dolores because she was the protagonist of this series, but she had obviously done some very questionable things in the last couple seasons that we're still wanting to root for her, but then we're not wanting to root for her because we want Bernard and Maeve to stop her because she wants to kill the human race because she's pissed. So you really think she's kind of the bad guy in this. Then by the time you reach the end of season three, you realize she's actually doing good for the human race. When Dolores learns that the humans are being controlled, almost like how they were being controlled in Westworld and they were given their story, they were given their opportunities, she wanted to free them from that. By the time you finish Metal Gear Solid 4, you realize that all of the antagonists in the previous games, while they did do bad stuff, while their motivations were always questionable, in the end, they all wanted to end the Patriots. And the Patriots were an AI that was controlling the world. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? All of the bad guys in the Metal Gear series wanted to break free from that. They wanted to set the world free from that. And it wasn't until those last moments in Metal Gear Solid 4 where we truly realized, like, maybe they weren't the bad guys the whole time. So I saw a huge connection between Dolores and her overall goal and Liquid, Ocelot, Solidus, Big Boss, and their drive to destroy the AI and set humanity free. That's a huge connection. There is obviously AI in both of these. So in the Westworld, the Westworld world, <laughs> Insight is this tech company that created an AI, Rehoboam. I think that's how you say it. I don't, I'm going to sound like an idiot. Rehoboam? Rehoboam is a predictive AI that is used to shape the future direction of humanity. It is used to keep humanity from destroying itself, really. And because it is predictive, it controls the people down to the opportunities they give them. So this character, Caleb, who I will get into in a minute, he basically learns that this AI has decided in 10 years, this dude's going to jump off a bridge and kill himself. So we're gonna give him construction work. This is where he's going in life and this is where we're gonna place him. So Rehoboam, and I'm not the first person to say this, is a lot like the Patriots. They were both born from man, obviously, and then took control of the future for human beings. And the Patriots being, they were originally a group of humans and Zero broke off and created the AI himself. And then as he got older, the AI got a mind of its own, which is basically what happened to Sirak and his brother. And the Patriots had control over everybody to the fact where you couldn't even say the word patriot. They kept that word out of people's vocabulary. And so instead it replaced it with lale lule lo. Rehabam controlled the people by their opportunities. It controlled the people by apps. It controlled the people via these 
mouthpieces and the Patriots controlled people via the nanomachines in their bodies. Nanomachines are these tiny little machines that are injected and placed inside your body. They can alter their human host by enhancing their abilities and their performance. So if you're sore, it can give you things to make you feel less sore. If you're feeling sad and you're getting overly emotional in battle and they don't want you to, they're gonna bring those hormones back. They're gonna pump you full of the good hormones so that you feel better and less stressed out as shown by Meryl freaking out in Metal Gear Solid 4 and her quickly calming down. Nanomachines also can manipulate memory and they can pretty much manipulate everything in the human body and regulate it. Switching to the Westworld world, <laughs> They have these like little retainers almost. They're metal implants in your mouth They're called grips. They interface with Insight. They have this ID8 tablet app and that's how they can control you. And apparently these military grips have more control over the individual user. So if you have this grip in your mouth and the application is turned on, whoever is using that application can basically control your vitals, your hormonal and metabolic response, and even your heart rate, which is shown by the example of them almost giving Caleb a heart attack. In both worlds, everybody's being monitored 24 seven. And it's kind of one of those things where you think about the future. There's so many movies like this, technology taking over the human race because we rely on it so much. And both of these worlds suffer from that same problem. The last episode of Westworld season three, we learned that Ciroc has literally been controlled by the AI in his ear and it tells him what to say, what to do, and it guides him. And he was one, along with his brother, who created the AI, but I think at this point the AI has talked to him so much that he just blindly follows them, or he was maybe just that follower to begin with. He reminded me of the Colonel and Rose in Metal Gear Solid 2, who weren't even the real Colonel and Rose at all, but we're talking to Raiden throughout the game. They were just the AI in disguise. And I feel like that's what a lot of people have come in contact with Sorok. All these people obeying Sorok think that they're talking to this real person. And really they're just more of a figurehead for the AI. You don't know if you, who you're talking to is really the person you're talking to, or if somebody is feeding them information or they don't even really exist to begin with. It's pretty insane. Okay, now let's talk about Caleb. In my opinion, Caleb is Raiden. They're both these people who were soldiers and they both had their memories erased by the people controlling them. By the end of Westworld season three, we learned that Caleb had actually ended up killing his friend. He was doing dirty work for this AI company. He was an outlier, meaning he didn't go along with the program like everyone else did. And so in the Westworld environment, if you were an outlier, you got sent away, basically sent to sleep. And so Caleb, was a problem and they took him in and they reprogrammed him to work for them and erased his memory and twisted around to where his buddy who's best friend who he actually killed he remembers him being killed in battle they manipulated his life and they manipulated everything and the same goes for Raiden Raiden was a child soldier brought up seeing horrific horrific things and and he didn't want to remember it so the Patriots saw him as like a great young soldier to take on and then using nanomachines helped erase his memory of being a child soldier. By the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, Raiden has realized, holy hell, who am I? I don't even know who I am. I've been working for the Patriots this whole time. They've brought me up. And Caleb and him share that. And they also share a huge part of taking down these AIs in both of their series. Caleb deletes the AI and Raiden destroys GW, which was Metal Gear Solid 2's main AI. They both retook their control, destroyed the things that were controlling them, and now want to lead free lives. I was thinking about how the S3 plan in Metal Gear Solid 2 is very, very similar to how Delos was watching the guests in Westworld and selling this information to somebody, which we found out later was through Hale, but that they were selling this information and that the AI was taking this information and learning to be even more predictive by the guest experiences, what the guests were feeling, what the guests were thinking at the time. The S3 plan was a program run by the Patriots in order to manipulate world events and people. It stood for selection for society sanity and using that data collected from that program which was the entirety of Metal Gear Solid 2, seeing how Raiden made it through all the enemies, seeing what choices the enemies and him chose. They used all of that data to figure out how to control the people and I feel like that is exactly what they did with Delos and Westworld. Other than like blackmail and things like that nature, why else would you care about collecting data on people unless you were going to use it to put into some sort of other program. So I feel like those are 
they're very similar. And then obviously the comparisons of we got the robots, we have the crazy apps, we have the crazy weapons, the vehicles, everything is being ran on technology, which is a lot like the Metal Gear Solid world. So there's tons of similarities in there. I don't know, maybe I'm imagining things that aren't there, but I just could not help multiple times this season. I looked at my husband and I was like, this is just like Metal Gear. And during season three, I was actually working on my Metal Gear Solid 4 story of, so that obviously didn't help. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if I forgot some stuff, any similarities you've seen. Please make sure to hit subscribe, that would help me out a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.